let's use amortized analysis to look at two list queues again. So remember that with two list queues, we can abstractly have a queue that had one at its head and then two and then eight all the way at the end. But that concretely, we broke that queue into two lists, a front list and a back list. The front was stored in order. The back was stored in reverse order. So maybe this queue with one through eight in it really was represented by a front queue that had one through three. Those would be the elements that had been in queued since the front was last emptied. And the back might have eight through four in that order. These would be the recently in queued elements that are added to the back. So we had a representation type, as I've just described, and we had a representation invariant which is that if the front is empty, then the back also must be empty. That gave us a unique representation of the empty queue. It also guaranteed that we knew where to go to dequeue an element. We always would be dequeuing from the front. Then if the front turned out to be empty, we would reverse the back and install it as the new front. So what's the efficiency of each of the operations in a two-list queue? Well, the peak operation, that was just looking at the head element of the front list. That's constant time. For the in queue operation, we always cons onto the back list. So cons is a constant time operation. There's one tricky little case there, which is if the entire queue were empty, then we would cons onto the front instead to maintain the rep invariant, but that's still constant. What about DQ though? Well, as we just reminded ourselves, Normally that's a constant time operation because we're just taking the tail of the front. But in that rare case that the front becomes empty, we've got to do something expensive. We have to reverse the back and make it be the front. Well, if the front's empty, then we've got to do the entire back. So how many elements is that? Let's call it N, the number of elements currently in the queue. So in the worst case, DQ is actually big O of N. It's a linear time operation because we've got to do something for every single one of the elements that's still in the queue. Uh, specifically, we have to take it out of the backlist and cons it onto the front. Let's think back to our piggy bank. Suppose that every time we in queue onto the back, we save $1. Then, whenever we get to the point that we actually need to reverse, we spend N dollars out of that piggy bank. We crack it open to pay for the expensive operation. Here's a worked out example of what that could look like. Suppose we start off with a queue that's completely empty and a bank account that's zero. Then we in queue one element that's gonna go onto the front. It has to by the rep invariant. Then we in queue nine more elements. All of those are gonna go onto the back and we save up $9 in the process. Next, suppose we dequeue one element. Well, that's going to make the front empty. We're not allowed to leave the front empty because of the rep invariant. So now we need to reverse the backlist. That's going to cost us $9, which we pay for. That's exactly how much we have in our bank account. Now the front is going to be 9, and we're going to have a zero account balance again. At this point, you know, we could go on and do more operations. Suppose that we finished by dequeuing nine elements. Well, those would all come off the front uh, and we would never more touch our bank account balance there. It would still stay at zero. So the efficiency then under this analysis, peak and NQ, those stay constant time. But DQ is amortized constant time. It's true, it's still worst case linear. But by playing this budgeting trick, this bookkeeping trick, we can say that on average, every operation is only costing us a constant amount because we get to spread out the cost of that expensive operation over the inexpensive operations.